I call on one person whenever I can, and I want to break this stuff down. That's Lieutenant Colonel Dan Davis uh, from the U.S. Army. He's a foreign policy expert, great friend of the show. He's been coming on with us since we started. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, we've talked about Syria. We've talked about Iran, Afghanistan. Um, but to me, China is the greatest threat on the planet against us. And... Uh, as much as I don't want to jump into conspiracy theories, I really feel like not informing us about this virus was an act of economic warfare because they needed another deflationary measure to offset the trade tariffs. Well, I, you know, I don't have any knowledge about whether they did or whether they did. There's certainly a lot of conflicting information out there, even by some Western experts. Uh, but, but what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, our relations with China, whatever we want, whatever we would like them to do, we have to engage with them on a way that's going to be working out to our advantage and recognizing that they are a, a great economic power. They do have significant military power in that region. And as such, it's, it's necessary and required of us to make the best of the situation for our country and not to inflame it any worse than it, than it already is. Because you're right, there are some big problems. Yeah, I see ma major, major problems. Um, one thing, you know, you, you're one of the best military men around. Um, I kind of have been focused on financial markets. And back in November and December, um, China was actually lowering the reserve amount on their bank deposits. So they were freeing up money for banks to lend out to keep businesses alive. And I happen to think that their economic largesse is not as great right now as they would like us uh, to think they are. Um, so I think they're acting out in ways that they haven't acted out before. And, and they've basically colonized all the Caribbean islands by building them docks and airports and stuff. So they have access all around us. I think, you know, if you're right, if they make one wrong, if we make one wrong move, um, they may, you know, be in a position to take some aggressive action. Well, but it, here's the thing. The good news is, I think, that uh, China is not anywhere near as strong as many are making them out to be. Now, the, the one exception would be in their defensive capabilities, their so-called A2AD, anti-access area denial. That is very formidable. And if we should decide to attack China, for example, if, if we want to get involved in a war over there, maybe with Taiwan or something, if we send our fleets and our aircraft and other people thing into that teeth of that A2AD, there is some real problems. But in the areas that you mentioned, whether it's in the Caribbean, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in elsewhere in, in Europe and some other places, they don't have the ability to project power anywhere near what we do. So if they did, you know, take any foolish moves, we have the capacity and the power with our global ability to deploy power that would check anything they did. And I think they know that. And so I don't think that they're going to they're going to take us on in those areas where they know they'd lose. Right. So let me ask you this, because I've always um, wondered this myself. With all the saber rattling between Iran and Israel and, uh, you know, people say, you know, many of the leaders of Iran who have said we're going to wipe Israel off the face of the map and all this other stuff. Um, and then Israel says, well, we're, you know, we're nuclear armed. Right. Um they all both have allies around the other, you know, not great allies, but like if Iran shot a nuke into Israel, they, you know, destroy many of their friends right right around there. And doesn't that go for like China and, you know, they have nukes. Russia has nukes. Uh, India has, you know, what can they do? They can't nuke each other. They, they almost kill themselves. That, that's exactly right. And, and that's that regional balance is what deters, uh, you know, virtually every regime from taking any kind of action of the type you're talking about, because that's exactly right. Uh, China has a lot of nuclear weapons, comparatively small, though. It's a few hundred at most compared to our 4,500 active nukes, which they certainly are aware of. And so they're not going to take any action that would prompt their destruction because they know that we can literally wipe their country off the map, whereas they could harm us. We would still be able to survive. They wouldn't. And they know that. So what they're going to do is they're going to flex their muscles around their border area and in their region, but they're not going to get uh, too frisky outside because they know that they would absolutely lose. And, and the one thing about China is they don't do things that harm their own interests. Yeah, I tell you, um, this guy, uh, the current president, to me, he's quite the savvy guy. You know what I mean? And there's like an, an old saying, you know, 
uh, you stab him in the back with a smile on your face. He comports himself like he's some new type of person, you know, modern and, you know, um, but, you know, he's about, the way I see it, as dictatorial as it, as it comes. He's a pretty evil guy, I think. Well, I think that you can count on, on the communist Chinese leadership and on the leadership in Russia with Putin. I think you can count on them to absolutely do everything in their power to minim maximize their uh, benefits in whatever category and to try to thwart us in whatever ways that they can. But, but I keep going back to this, is that our power, both economically and militarily, is so much stronger than, than either one of those. Even with China's rise right now, we still hold the Trump card. So as long as we don't take any foolish and unnecessarily provocative actions, uh, we'll be able to deter China indefinitely, and we'll continue to have the opportunity to have effective global trade to help our own nation uh, while still holding China responsible for areas where they're doing you know, nefarious things like stealing intellectual property, et cetera. We have the Trump cards, and we, have, we can still make this good for America no matter what they do. So, uh, Colonel, I, I just I know you've been a great resource for me on Afghanistan and Afghan policy and bringing soldiers home and stuff. Um, but my question to you is this. You know, I know the left wing media wants to bring up anything they can to bash the president. And they keep bringing up these Russian bounties on um, on American soldiers. Um, if something is that a rare occurrence for you know, foreign intel and special forces to try to, you know, diminish a global enemy? Uh, well, no, I, I don't think there's anything new about that. And I mean, to be perfectly frank, we, we use some of our uh, counterintelligence and counter espionage agents, you know, uh, to do the same thing to try to keep others in line as well. So it's, there's nothing new about that. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that what distinguishes us is that you know, we, we want to make sure that others are held accountable for what they do and for the purpose of keeping both the nation and the, and the globe safe. Uh, so I think that that's the, the one thing that, that's different with us. But there's nothing unusual about it at all, unfortunately. Yeah. And that I had other experts not as esteemed as you who've said, hey, look, you know, it's a sucky thing. Um, but, you know, we got guys in black hoods out there that are doing similar things in other parts of the world to our enemies. So, you know, it, it, this is not a new occurrence. Um, is something like that, um, in your view, something you think that would rise all the way to the president's daily briefing? Uh, that's uncertain. I mean, you, you know, you can't. This, you know, in, in defense of the president, there are literally thousands of pieces of intelligence every single day, which any one of which could be considered very important. Uh, and you just can't bring every one of them to the president all the time or else you would he would never have any time to do anything else. And so it's really incumbent upon his his senior leaders and the other people on his staff to make sure that, uh, you know, that they only bring the stuff that's actionable to the president, something that's validated. They don't want to keep saying, well, there's the possibility of this, that this might be the case. So it's a balancing act because sometimes you want to do if something's important enough, you might want to bring it up. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a tough balancing act to follow. And I'll just say it's it's not an easy call. Well, if we did, like you said, and brought those troops home from Afghanistan, <laughs> then uh, we wouldn't even be dealing with this problem. But uh, the struggle right. continues. Lieutenant Colonel Dan Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all your service to our country. And uh, your inputs are always uh, well appreciated by me and our audience. Thank you. Thank you very much for having Have me. Have a great weekend, Colonel.